click us into live whenever you have a minute. All to right, do. you're live. Okay. And where do we click go live? I don't see any messages coming up that says we have to approve. A it. little thing should have popped up to say, got it? Or maybe it's just me. I don't know. No, nothing popped up. <laughs> yeah, don't it, it's very obvious that we're live. So that's. There, there is a message that says webinar is now streaming live on YouTube. So must be good. Welcome, everyone. <laughs> this edition of the BIA meeting for Cremor. It's October 19th. Um, it is just approximately 7.07 .07 p.m. We're going to start the meeting. And I'd love to just take a minute to welcome you all and thank you all for your time tonight. And thank you for your volunteer hours. I know I've spoken to all of you and you've all done a lot of work in the last little while, especially while I was away. So thank you so much, Jackie, for chairing the last meeting and for all of you for keeping up so much work. I know you're all struggling to keep your head above water because we're all so busy. So I want to just say really, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I know sometimes the work you do is in the background and it gets kind of forgotten or not seen, but I just want to make sure that you are recognized for all the time and effort you guys all put into meetings and phone calls and all the stuff that we do. So thanks a lot. Um, I'm going to hop into the approval of tonight's agenda. A um, couple things I'd like to add to the agenda tonight. Um, if you don't, if you'll just let me um, sort of butt, butt right in here. It's uh, under events, I'd like to add Halloween. I, no I noticed on the minutes that Jen had, had, had spoken up about Halloween, but I wasn't really clear where we left it. So if we could just sort of get a quick update on Halloween. And uh, 7.4, I'd like to do the shopping, shopping events, um, our shopping event, possibly talk about the White Wednesday where we can invite uh, Kelly to join us and talk about that as well. So I'd like to add 7.4 to the agenda as shopping event for the holidays. Lori, is there um, anything on trademarking the logo? There is. It's under marketing. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. It's been added. Um, is there anything else? Anyone else would like to make any um, amendments to tonight's agenda? Is there anything on the Christmas street decor? Yes. Decor is, okay. Where did I see that? Street decor update? Yes, there is. Awesome. Okay. Anyone else have anything they'd like to add to the agenda? We're all good to go. Okay, so then I'm going to look for um, somebody to make a motion to approve tonight's agenda and a seconder. Do we'll we have a motion to approve? John and a seconder. Jackie, I think I saw your hand fly yep. up there. Awesome. Thank you. All in favor of tonight's uh, agenda. Okay, perfect. So let's move on. Uh, disclosure of co disqualifying interest in nature thereof. Does anyone have a conflict they'd like to um, present at this time or um, later on? Mm -hmm. If at some point you feel there's a conflict with one of the topics we're discussing, you're welcome to just turn off your camera or uh, just turn off your, your volume if you'd, if you'd like to um, disqualify yourself. Um, okay, so let's go into the approval of the minutes. I did read the minutes from last month. Thanks, Kayla, for putting those together. Uh, so from September 14th, um, can I get somebody who's uh, read the minutes to make a motion to approve them? So be it resolved, the Cremore Business Improvement Area Management Board hereby approves the meeting minutes dated September 14th, 2021 as presented. John is making the motion. And do I have a seconder? I have Jackie again or Linda. Perfect. Thank you. And all in favor of uh, the minutes being approved? Yes. Great. All right. So now we're going to get into the fun stuff. Here we are right into the weeds. So business arising from the minutes. Um, I did read in the minutes from last meeting, uh, John, that you had had sort of stuck your hand up and said you would look into the situation on the street with the weeds. So I'm sorry, I'm not super clear on where we left off with that. So if you could just give us a bit of a, an update, that'd be great. Yeah, I did. Um, I had uh, several uh, uh, email conversations with, with Terry on it. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong, but they should be done now. Um, the problem seemed to be the, uh, the, uh, the vinegar-based product that they typically use um, was out of stock for a while and unavailable. Um, and unfortunately, because it, it uh, dragged on for a while, it, it got forgotten about. And, but anyways, they, they have it back now and, and they're, they're back uh, in control of the situation. 
So you, so it has been done. I'm sorry, I haven't. Uh, I've been it away. Was, from yeah, the last email uh, that I had from Terry was uh, last week, and uh, he informed me that it was. I, I believe it was done on Saturday. So are they spraying the weeds, or are they also removing them? Do you, it's just spraying them. I, I believe it was just spraying. Um, because we also need them to be removed, um, I think, right, Sarah? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think so. And with an eye to getting them very early next year, because at this point, they're kind of done growing. They've all gone to seed. Yeah. So if we can, I understand everybody's struggling with shortages. Um, yeah. So if we can get on the early train so that we are able to kind of nip them in the bud before they go to seed, I think it would make a big difference uh, in the future. Yeah, I did have that conversation with Terry as well, uh, and uh, he assured me they, uh, yeah, because they have the, the product back in, in in now, and they he doesn't he doesn't think that'll be a, an issue for the following season. So then, the fall of the year. that's amazing. So just in general, then it it's our understanding that the municipality will be responsible for weed. Ma like maintaining the actual sidewalks, ensuring that it's weed free and that they've got the proper product and the staff to do that. So that isn't something that we have to budget for or plan for. That's my understanding. But at the same time, I suggested to Terry that uh, we actually have a, a sit down and discuss, put it on paper, discuss how, who's responsible for what. So then we don't have to schedules. do this. Yeah, exactly. then we don't have to do this second guessing. Really. Yeah, I, I would really love that. I think we've wanted to do that for a few years, actually kind of sit down and get that spreadsheet. Um, yeah. but, I mean, everything's gone so sideways. Um, mm. um, so but, so what, what would next steps be, John, to make that happen? Um, I, I would suggest uh, that uh, we appoint a, a, a small delegation to have that discussion uh, with Terry and, and uh, just okay. put it all on paper. And from our end, what we can do maybe is log some of our activities. I think one of the things that we have to be really mindful of this year, as it's our last year, um, that we should be very um, aware of what we're leaving the next group and the tools that they're going to have. So I think it's really great if we spend some time, all of us, thinking about the activities that we've done, the things, the people we communicate with, what we communicate with them about, when we communicate with them, and then putting it all in one kind of uh, spot and we can share that with the municipality, maybe hammer out some of these things uh, and then we have something to pass on to the next people too. Yeah, uh, just a suggestion, but uh, um, uh, Rhonda and I used to do, do a lot of uh, events and, 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 uh, and I'm not gonna take any credit for this. This was Rhonda's doing. She would actually create a, a document on each event, uh, who all the contacts were, uh, what was involved, all of that stuff, uh, and then have that filed under that particular event so that if anything happened to any one of us, mm -hmm. uh, somebody else could just pick up that file and run with it. I think for events, we, we have that yeah. in place. I okay. think for the street decor, though, it's true. Um, we've had several meetings with Terry over the last couple of years. So mm -hmm. putting that all in writing and getting that um, organized. Part of me thinks we should almost do it in the winter or the spring. Yeah. Before, um, because at this point, I mean, we're winding down the season. I know they've got their summer staff that are, I think, leaving soon, sounds like. And um, mm -hmm. and so I think it would be top of mind, like early, early spring, like February, March kind of time frame to kind of sit down with Terry again. He was super receptive last spring when we, we met with him about the planters and the watering. And we, we really, really did great. We have a lot of things on paper based on our meeting last spring. So I think this is just the next evolution of that meeting. So let's... Um, put a point on that. So sort of February, March timeframe to really pick that up again and make sure that we have a schedule and we know who's doing what, you know, are they going to do, agree to do the watering for us again? Are they going to agree to do the moving up the planters? Just all the things that, that we've, um, we've been so benefit, it's been so beneficial for us to have from the township. It's been a great year because of a very quick meeting from, with Terry. 
Yeah, it was a great year. Yeah, we had a really great meeting with Terry back in March. Um, yeah. Okay, wonderful. Is there anything else you'd like to add, John? I was just going to say that, that we did uh, touch uh, briefly on the watering and my understanding that that was going to happen again next year as well. Yeah, awesome. fantastic. That's great because they, that has been a super helpful thing and it mm -hmm. saved us almost $4,000. So that was a, a really big deal. Okay, great. Thanks. So we're going to move on now. Um, Santa Claus Parade. I don't know if you talked about this in the last, um, I know I saw that Natalie DeRuiter is going to head up this year's Santa Claus Parade. And um, Sarah, you might have some information from Natalie tonight. We were hope I was hoping maybe she'd join us, but maybe I was a bit late to the game and getting her an invite. So um, I, I, I sent her how to get in. I don't know, Kayla, if she has tried to get in from that route, but uh, mm -hmm. is there as, yeah, as somebody who's watching or something like that, that we can promote at this time into a panelist? I don't see anybody available. Okay. Yeah, she's, she's got young children. So um, she's all set to go and things look like they are in great shape. There's no changes to what she wants in terms of budget. At this point, the plan is to, um, uh, she's talked to Amanda um, and all of the contacts at the municipality and is feeling fairly confident that an outdoor gathering will be fine from the from the um, perspective of the municipality. So I guess ultimately we should, as a group, discuss what our comfort levels are and what our business owner comfort levels are. And then in the event that we're not comfortable with a gathering on the main street, then we can pivot to the stationary parade. The sooner we can, I mean, with the caveat that anything can change at any time, obviously. <laughs> But, um, but the hope is that everything will be a go. Uh, the Legion is lined up and the arena so that we can use those facilities. Using the um, parade route that we used in 2019, which was modified away from using the Simcoe County uh, or from using the works, the public works, which we found to be much better because it was safer and we were staying off of a county road. And we also had a lot more space at the arena parking lot and it was so nice to have access to the washrooms and also the support of the Legion. So mm -hmm. that's kind of the hope right now that it'll be back to normal. We have a Santa lined up and our, our sleigh is going to be, uh, we've got our Santa float under control. Our BIA float, this is a big deal. <laughs> we Thank own it. You guys, we own this one now. So yeah, it looks like it's in good shape. And to John's point, we are documenting, documenting, documenting because we, Natalie is going to have a small baby next year. So we really oh, wow. need to know okay. uh, how to do this without her there. So uh, that's, that's kind of been a big thing. I will share all of the planning documents. Um, they'll be available for anybody to see. I think Kayla has them. She can put them in the minutes. And we're um, going to be seeking some volunteers. Lori, you and I can maybe touch base on marketing and what the plans are there. Um, mm -hmm. In the past, I've made the assets. I'm happy to do that again. And, and I know, Jen, you in the past have had some involvement too. So I know that Natalie's going to come knocking on your door. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Um, Sarah, do we need to add anything to the float to? Um, Has the float yeah, <laughs> been painted? Oh, I know you was going to yeah. do some maintenance and some painting and kind of renovate the float a bit. Yes, yeah, so Darcy has the float and is on it. She's found, I think the MacArthur's are going to lend us a wagon and she's, she's really taken that on, which is huge. The last parade we did, that was the only stressful part. Everything else was easy, but that, that Santa Claus float, well, I mean, and it's not on the minutes for a year and a half. So, <laughs> and, and do we have a Santa? We do have a Santa. Santa has, um, for all the children watching uh, <laughs> on YouTube live, <laughs> Santa will be here. He's made a special, yeah, he's he's penciled us in. So we are all set to go and his his outfit has been cleaned. So sweet. We have ready. the same, um, I, like, have you talked to the people from the school or the breakfast with Santa to know if like those events are still going on? Because last year, we sort of had the stationary parade and then we had Santa in front of the log cabin on the benches. Do you remember yeah. that? So is that, yeah. how are we, are we doing that again? So 
the tradition was always that Santa went back to the log cabin afterwards mm -hmm. and there was a meet and greet there and it was super popular last year, I think in part because there wasn't a breakfast with Santa. Um, I did that did occur to me today that we should reach out to the school and find out if they're going to do that I think because it's a lot of food service and stuff I, I will see but I'll I'll reach out to them and find out about that but it is our intention to um, have a meet and greet with Santa outside at the log cabin after the parade we've talked to Pat and Chris about that they're super enthusiastic and they want that to go ahead so we'll be setting up um the sleigh will not be there because last year we set it up and left it. we the royal yeah. we i didn't do it right. <laughs> uh so last year natalie and darcy set that all up and decorated it and uh it stayed there so this year what they'll do is they're gonna maybe use some of our purple chairs and use that to create a little bit of a a little um special setup for people to have pictures with santa mm -hmm. That's amazing. Okay, but and we'll check in with Breakfast with Santa. I did hear um, from Mary Boyd, and they're going ahead with their tree lighting on the Friday night, so we can promote that as part of our Christmas our, in the Valley. Our Christmas in the Valley, which is fantastic. Is the tree lighting going to be on the tree at the cenotaph or at the back of Station on the Green? I wasn't at last year's. I think that it's going to be on the east side of the station and they have big plans. That's all I know. Fantastic. Mm. Okay. That's great. Well, that's great news to hear about the Santa Claus parade float and the budget, the BIA, how much money are we sort of proposing to put it towards the parade? So in, in the 2021 budget, we had $5,800 budgeted to take care of the Santa Claus parade, mm -hmm. 2000 of which was the purchase of the sleigh. sleigh. So that's, that's been spent. And, um, oh, look at this. Look at this. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, oh, do you have the budget page there too, Kayla? Or did it just send you the one page? Anyway, I find my unmute button. Uh, it's just the one page. Oh, wait, one is nine. Let's see. We got this, man. So, John, you can see we've got we got documents. Okay. <laughs> so, 2021, you can see we've got it all lined up there. So, we've got. Do we have enough money for a marching band? We that's that's in there. So, uh, Natalie's talked. To, we definitely will have the Highlanders. Right. They're booked and sorted. And then CCI is struggling a little bit because the transportation element of it. Mm -hmm. So they will join us if they can. We have them booked. And I think the right now what they're doing is like, if the kids can get there, then they'll have a marching band. So that's- Can we not pay for a bus or is it because of COVID they don't want to take a COVID, bus? Yeah, they just don't want to be sticking kids on. They they can't, the, the band isn't, isn't doing that. Okay. So- I understand. Um, but because we're so close, maybe, and who knows, a month from now, they may feel differently. So we're definitely in the queue and we have money budgeted to have them attend. So um, traditionally, we don't spend a lot of money. The other thing we need to do is get to Amanda to put up our annual banner for the Santa Claus Parade and Christmas in the Valley. Okay. Is that something that Natalie's doing or? Yeah. Yeah. So we're taking care of the road. She's in touch about the road closure. Like we're just, we're going forward. Like all of, all of that's going to happen. Okay. Okay. So you guys will reach out to us as the BIA if you need help or you need assistance with anything. Yeah. And then Lori, you and I should talk just about making sure we have all the proper assets for, yep. for marketing for and also um, getting the website updated, all of that sort of thing. Yeah, the website. Yeah. Do we have a line item in here for some of that? Uh, I think that would sit under our regular maintenance. So I don't think yes. that that's specific to this event. Okay. Fine. No problem. It's a little blurry for me to see, but I can look at it later. Yeah. Yeah. I think. Um, oh, there. Thank you. <laughs> I have a very small screen. Okay. Perfect. Awesome. Okay, well, that's great, Sarah. Thanks for presenting on behalf of Natalie and, your, and the team at the Echo. Is it is it the Echo really that's um, putting it together or really Natalie? 
Well, Natalie's the staff person that's spending the time on it, but she's doing it during office hours. So, so it's thank you to the Echo for um. Yeah, we're we're working as a team to make it happen. Yeah, you guys do a great job making sure this thing happens. It's a big deal for this community. So thank you. Okay, great. Um, anything else for the Santa Claus parade, or can we move on to the next one? Okay, so let's move on. Um, street decor update. Okay, lots going on here. Late breaking news today. I saw an email from Amanda that said they're taking the planters off the street this week, which yes. was supposed to go the 26th, I think. Yeah, from a little bit early. Flying around. Um, and now something's happened, I guess, and they suddenly have to take them off this week. Mm -hmm. So we suddenly have to figure out what to do with the pumpkins. And I saw Sarah's suggestion that we take the pumpkins to the station on the green for the firefighters. Um, so I posted it. I posted it on to the BIA web uh, Facebook group, just recommending everybody goes out and grabs them if they want them for their business or if they want to enter in the pumpkin carving contest. And I actually thought rather than asking staff to do it, I think if we put it up on that Creamore Caremongering site, I bet you they'd get snapped up pretty quickly. And then hopefully from there, if there are any left over, we'll just take them over to the station for the firefighters. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, great. So that is the um, update for the planter. So they will be moving off the street earlier than we wanted them to, but here we are. At least we're getting the help from the uh, from the township for that. So we appreciate that. Um, Just while we're talking about the cleanup of the of the street, yes, um, I think. I can't remember if I, we are able to store the chairs at the log cabin. I can't remember if that was in the last meeting minutes or not. I don't think no, that, was. That, was, that was gonna be my next question about the chairs. Um, yeah, so I talked to Pat and Chris, they're more than happy to have the chairs taken over to the log cabin. I don't know if that's something that we can lean on the Clearview staff if they're already moving everything. That would be awesome. Otherwise, I will organize a truck and trailer day. I will truck them over as well with my truck. Or maybe uh, maybe send a quick uh, message to Amanda if she's the one that notified you that the, well, that the planters are leaving and ask Amanda if they would be willing to grab the chairs and move them to the, the log cabin at the same time. I will do that because that awesome. would be super nice if they've already, I, I noticed they're also moving the benches. So yeah. I will. I, we have I will. to organize with Chris and Pat when the log cabin, someone can be there with the keys. Yeah. Because we would need to organize all of that. That is super nice for them to let us store the, the chairs in there because I think the chairs were such a big hit that we want to keep them for next year for sure. They may be re-themed, repainted, but um, I think they were super great addition to the street the, this year. So that's great for organizing that, Sarah. Thanks. Okay, um, great. So anything else? Street decor update. Let's, um, Jackie, do we want to talk about uh, the holiday street decor? Jackie and um, Jen and I are in a subcommittee on holiday street decor. Yeah, um, sure. Um, so we got um, uh, an early estimate on permanent lighting to silhouette the buildings downtown, um, only on like two or three buildings to see if it was actually something that we should pursue. And I think the pricing is, is reasonable enough. And with uh, Lori's mention of Mara looking to hand out some money from the township for that purpose, uh, I think we should go ahead. So uh, I'm just waiting to hear back from them to come on site and give us a, um, uh, they'll measure everything up and give us a full estimate. It's the same company, it's called Nick's Bright. They're doing um, Alliston this year and uh, they color match uh, boards, which they permanently attach to the building. And then the lighting is on it and each, each um, building would be responsible for plugging it in themselves. And then each one is actually has their own controller. So they're, they're able to do any color, like a gazillion colors, a gazillion different um, motion patterns, if you so choose kind of thing. So I think they have a lot of, um, well, a lot of applications all through the year. So the uh, Creamore Nights, it would be fantastic to have a little bit of ambiance lighting. Um, St. Patrick's Day, turn them all green, et cetera, et cetera. There's so many things you could do with them. Um, so I guess uh, we'll, as soon as that happens, we'll, uh, we'll get that off to 
the township and see where that goes. And I'm not sure if we're going to be able to put it, get any of that happening this year. I mean, I'm hoping so. It just depends how quickly we can get the price and get it to uh, council before their meeting. So, so this, this is uh, the project that, that actually was Jackie's idea a few years ago. And um, in lieu of not being able to put any of the lighting in the trees and not being able to hang anything from the, the poles, as you all know, and, and not whole, being able to put anything across the street. Well, we've <laughs> gone through so many iterations of this, right? So what we've landed on is we could put silhouette white lights, you know, like this across all the buildings at the very top and have some sort of ambiance lighting for the evenings. We realized that, you know, not everyone's open in the evenings, but it would really add to the sort of fairy, fairy book, uh, fairy tale kind of look of our town and all the stores doing their own windows it would be really, really beautiful, but it would be something of an investment because it would be something we would just use from year to year. And as Jackie was yeah. saying, we were sort of brainstorming the other day about different applications of these lights and could be kind of interesting, you know, like for Cremor Nights to be able to have these lights on, you know, we could do different themes, different colors. I don't know, what do you, what do you guys think about the idea of silhouettes on buildings? Is that, some of you, a lot of you own buildings here. So um, Jen, Linda, Sarah, I'd love to hear what you guys think about, about the idea. I think it would be beautiful. Yeah. As long as they're in, you know, I'm sure they're LED low draw, blah, blah. Oh yeah, blah. of course. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I do too. I think it'd be awesome. Well, I, I think it'd be so great because they do the installation, they do everything. Like <laughs> We don't have to do the work. So. And it would be Caroline Street too. I don't know if we said that, but you know, Sarah, you're building as well, like down Caroline. Well, the BIA, right? It would be anybody within the BIA. Well, I think I think depending on how the pricing turns out and how much the township is able to uh, kick towards us, uh, we might end up putting an off route. Maybe we'll be asking businesses or building owners to kick in a certain amount, maybe not. Maybe we'll implement it in stages. Maybe we'll do uh, uh, one block both sides and then just the tops. And then the next year we'll add the rest. And then maybe the next year we'll do uprights. So there's lots of ways to look at it. I think it all comes down to getting the pricing and uh, getting their their timing and schedule as well and seeing seeing where we're at. So before we can make a full decision. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we'll look for it. I think they're coming maybe this week to Cremore to do some more site inspection. Is that correct? Is it this week? Yeah, well, I'm hoping it's this week, uh, mm -hmm. although this week is quickly running out and um, timing wise, I don't know. I don't think I'm actually available the rest of the week to meet them. Um, maybe Friday, if they can do Friday, I might be able to squeeze it in, but um, definitely next week, if not this week. So, and I'm hoping like Monday. <laughs> right. Yeah. So interesting project, um, could be pretty spectacular and could be a real sort of landmark design, but in keeping just small little white lights across the tops of buildings, I think would be something really spectacular. And even during the day in the winter, it'd be really, really, really pretty. Yeah, for sure. So, so that's the, the proposal at the moment. The other proposal, we have a plan B because we're not sure it's all gonna get done, not sure about the money. Um, so we do have a plan B as well, which Jen and Jackie and I have talked Quite, quite a lot about. And I think what we've sort of landed on is that we're at the moment, we're sourcing decorations to hang in the trees as they currently are. So there'll be something in the trees during the day. We're looking at snowflakes at the moment um, because we, we've we discussed you know Christmas ornaments and different things like that and decided it was too holiday and thought if there was something we could leave all throughout the whole winter, that would be great. So we're looking, um, we've been looking online at various different um, snowflake designs, icicles, stars, something that would be very pretty in the in the trees all the way down the street that, that we would ha have hung. And we don't need a lot. We're sort of looking at something a little bit of a larger size so that, you know, it really stands out. So that's probably going to happen for sure, we're hoping. And whether mm -hmm. the lights work out or not, at least we'll have, you know, ornaments. Have something on the street for sure. Look, you know, quite pretty. Any thoughts or comments on that? Uh, we're also, in addition to that, we're looking at... Um, uh, like a like a big chunky knit sort of wrap yeah. around the uh, trunk, maybe with a scarf or something tied around it. Maybe two or three scarves. Anyway, something that coordinates with the stars and the and the and the um, snowflakes. snowflakes and the icicles. Yeah, we kind of thought it might be kind of fun to just when we have to talk to the tree society about wrapping, you know, really chunky knit scarves or something like that around the trees, like kind of cute just on the trunks again, yeah. just to give it some sort of personality on the street and a bit of fun mm -hmm. and some great colors. 
I yeah, still don't good. know that you guys want to revive it, but I still have the, um, I have all of the Buffalo plaid all clean and folded in my cupboard at work if you need good that. Stuff. Okay. Um, do you have a count? Do you know how many there are? No. I, no. Don't. I don't. I don't. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm just thinking like we'll have to count the trees, the number of trees. And if we already had the buffalo plaid, we can certainly, um, we could certainly reuse that as scarves in the trees. Yep. That'd be cute. And yeah. Then, maybe, you know, you could do like knit one. Yeah. Buffalo plaid if you don't have enough. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just something that you has have it if you need it. Yeah, okay. that's good. That's good to know because I wasn't sure where those went. So that's good to know you have them. I, I know they're not very long, but um, maybe there's a way to, I don't know, we could figure something out. Yeah. And if you don't want them, can I get rid of them is my next question. <laughs> <laughs> not <laughs> yet. Not yet. <laughs> yeah, I'll come over and... No. Uh, <laughs> store okay. them in the display. <laughs> All right, that is sort of the street decor update. More to come on that. We're working. Okay. Uh, really Sorry. Sorry. I'm going back to breakfast with Santa. I just checked with Vicki Brulot and she said it, it's not happening this year. Um, so because our... That's not happening. I think we will have a, a, a really a, a big turnout for visits with Santa. So, but we'll, we're prepared for that. I know that Sim has some ideas of how he can support us with some treats and hot chocolate. And uh, that's really helpful. Thanks, Jen. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Okay, good. Okay, so I'm gonna move off of street decor unless there's anything else, Jen or Jackie, that you wanted to add. Okay, awesome. Thank you guys. Um, okay, so we're going to move on to events. Um, you know, probably poor Kelly's been sitting out there. I, I, you know, maybe we can move the shopping event and the um, White Wednesday event up to up to the top here, if you don't mind. Agreed. Because I, I realize that she's uh, she's probably sitting here waiting waiting patiently <laughs> for her turn to speak. So, um, if you don't mind promoting Kelly while we're talking. Now, traditionally, we've always had sort of a shopping event that we've done. And, um, you know, one of the proposals is to do the, the White Wednesday. You know, traditionally here in Cremor, we've done a weekend event, which has either been a Saturday or a Sunday shopping in the last few years. We didn't do it last year because of obvious COVID. Um, do you guys see the merit in doing a weekend shopping event like we've done in the past for Christmas in the Valley and do, I don't know, a sip and shop or something kind of fun. Like I know a couple of years ago, Jackie planned a really fun one where there was cider and there was all kinds of stations people could go to. And we had a really great turnout that day. Um, is that something you guys see yourselves, us as a team putting together again? Shopping events, seeing some nods, yes, maybe. Okay, the other option, or we can do both um, if needed, is the White Wednesday. So White Wednesday, I think you guys talked about it in the last meeting. I wasn't really clear on the minutes about where we sort of left it with that, whether... Uh, um, we left it with Heather. Heather was going to uh, liaise with um, the chair, the um, Stainer, and uh, get back to us. And um, I sent Heather a text as if she had an update on that, but I haven't heard anything from Heather. Okay, good. Okay, Kelly, do you want to just um, walk us through White Wednesday and then next steps in terms of what's needed to participate if, if businesses want to participate? Uh, yeah, uh, thank you for having me tonight. Um, so I'm Kelly Kramer, the president of the chamber. I think I met some of you when I was walking around last week and uh, handing out maps. Uh, we've been doing the White Wednesday for this is our third year. So it's starting to get pretty well known around the area. We did, I think, have one or two stores last year from Creamore uh, that participated. Uh, but now that we're the Clearview Chamber, we're trying to do things more, uh, more getting everybody involved, not just Stainer, not just each area. We're trying to do all of Clearview. So what we want to do is help promote you with your stuff and share out what we're doing. So uh, right now, where we stand with White Wednesday, we have a website set up and any store that wants to join, all they have to do is let me know when I add them. And so it, it gets posted out that way. Uh, the township is off to do two weeks of ads on the radio for two of the local radio stations uh, for uh, the week before, uh, including the day of, as well as newspaper ads for us. 
Um, so it's basically all you, we're asking the stores to do is let us know that they're participating so we can post it out and we do Facebook posts. Um, and then just put an ad in the uh, poster, that, which we'll give them, put it in their window saying they're participating. And if they could do some white decorations in the window just for the White Wednesday. So instead of Black Friday, which is on the Friday, the Wednesday before we do the White Wednesday. So it's just to get boots on the door and get the Christmas shopping going. But what's been the feedback in the other two years that you've had? Have you been able to survey the businesses that participated or what's been the sort of feedback? Because I'm going to be honest, Wednesday is a really difficult day to get people to come out in this town. <laughs> Half of our stores are closed on Wednesdays. Yeah, I know. Your, it, yours is a little different balance than it is in the other uh, areas. Um, the first year we got pretty good turnout. People were saying, you know, it's Wednesdays is usually a slow day anyway. Uh, last year they were surprised. We did get some really good turnout and I think it's just cause it's starting to get momentum. Um, and people knew that there would be some good sales. So, and we were in the middle of a pandemic, which was really amazing. So mm -hmm. this year we're hoping now that things are opening up, we'll have even better. And especially since we're getting the extra, uh, advertising on the radio and everything, starting to promote it. So the expectation, oh, sorry. Go ahead, sir. The expectation is that there'll be special offerings, sales and promotions from the, okay. Yeah. So instead of a Black Friday, we're just going to beat them by two days, right? Got it. And are stores staying open later on Wednesday night or is it just sort of regular store hours? We had both. I think most of them just stayed open their regular hours. Um, I think. I think one of the uh, clothing stores stayed open, but I can't remember. I don't know if you remember John or not, but. Uh... Yeah, if I remember correctly, I think Barb stayed open a little. Yeah. So we heard good things. The stores were saying like, it's usually quiet on a Wednesday and it was definitely more than that we, they would normally have got. So it's starting to take off, right? Yeah, I think I think it's a no-brainer. Like, put it out to the membership, and whoever wants to participate, they'll yes. send their name to get on the website. And having the radio advertising and having Creamer link to that is obviously useful. So, yeah. yeah. So it sounds like it's more like a local kind of thing. So just to get local shoppers to come out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it's going to be through the 97.7, I think, is one of the stations that use. So hopefully, we're going to get some people from uh, Collingwood and the surrounding areas with Sega, right? So. Let's get them into Clearview. Let them spend their money here. Mm. Okay. Get the shopping season started. Send me some information. Maybe we can send out an email to our membership just to let them um, decide whether they're going to be part of it or not. And, you know, you can kind of coordinate it from there, it sounds like. So yeah. if you don't mind just um, sending me an email with some details that I can literally copy and paste into a, into sure. a mail, group, I can send it to the membership, no problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's great. Anybody else have any questions for Kelly on the White Wednesday? Mm. Is it branded? Like, is it got a logo? Is it, yeah, it's got a whole look and everything. Okay. Yeah, so um, if you go to whitewednesday.ca, mm -hmm. that's our, that's the link. And so right now I've taken down all the stuff from the previous one, previous ones, uh, because I'm starting here from, um, is there a cost to to join or to participate for the businesses? Nope. Okay. Nope. <laughs> okay. Uh, wait Wednesday to own. It's November twenty fourth. Okay. Yes. Yep. So we're basically saying nine till nine, but it's up to each store. Oh, so yeah. <laughs> some will stay open, some won't. So I can't. I have to put a date in, just the way the oh, Facebook. Okay. And, oh, and the uh, the contact form link is right on that website page, so that's really easy to sign up, right? Yeah, awesome. Great. And then once they sign up, they just a contact. Let me know your store that you want to be part of it. We'll get you added onto the website as a participating. We'll do a post out onto Facebook that, hey, so and so is joining the Wait Wednesday. Uh, go and see them, that sort of thing. So we're just trying to get boots on the door right now. Let's get things going again, get Christmas started, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, that's great. Fantastic. Okay, do you have anybody else have any questions for Kelly or any other comments about the uh, White Wednesday event? No? I love the idea. Okay. Well, thanks, Kelly. Thanks for joining us today. We really appreciate 
you coming out and participating in our meeting. It's nice to see you for those of us uh, who haven't maybe met you. It's great to see your face and know that you're there and great that we can participate and, and collaborate together on, on some of these uh, events coming up. So fantastic. Yeah. Can I, uh, uh, one more thing that we're trying to uh, work with is um, I've been dealing with Amanda and Trevor at town hall. And last year when we did our tree lighting, uh, I was there representing the chamber and I was going like, where's the BIA? And they're going, well, they do theirs the same night. And I was like, this isn't right. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I've, I've asked the town uh, stainer to do their tree lighting on Thursday night mm -hmm. so that we can have a more consistent flow for Clearview. So we want to promote out their Clearview Christmas and we want to have the tree lighting on, on Thursday and stainer. And then we want to promote you for your Friday for your tree lighting. And if you could let us know when the Santa Claus parade is. So we're going to make it like a big event. We're still going to do your, your Christmas in the Valley. So mm -hmm. like we're going to, it'll be right there and just give me all your details, but we want to advertise this out and let's get people again back into Clearview and let's have a better flow of it. Right. So if you guys mm -hmm. can let me know, you know, more details about your Santa Claus parade and the tree lighting and all that, I'll work with Amanda and we'll start getting a, a big, Let's make it like a, uh, like you said, a weekend event, right? But let's start it and, and grow it out sort of thing. Now, would you be able to leave our branding under your weekend events so it looks like yes. it's just promoting a separate event? Yeah. yeah. Okay, that, that totally makes sense. Yeah, because you also have a different Santa Claus parade, correct? Yeah. So, and your tree lighting is done by your tree association. And I think ours is done by who, John? Do you remember who does our tree lighting? Are the townships doing ours this time, but who's doing our Santa yeah. Claus? It's the Kinsman. I believe it is the Kinsman, yeah. Yeah. So we're just hoping to, if we can make it like a big ad, we're going to try and say, you know, like, let's start this out and go to this tree lighting. Let's go to this tree lighting. Let's do shopping here. Let's do shopping here. And let's just keep it going as a flow. But mm -hmm. definitely send me your branding. We're going to have it all in there. Who's doing your tree lighting and everybody that's involved. What kind of budget do you have for ads? Are you talking mostly print and radio? Is that sort of... And yeah. Facebook. We do a lot of Facebook, right? Facebook. Okay. Okay. So, and for print, it's it's just like local newspapers kind of thing? Yeah. Kelly, if I'm sending this, is sending it just to Amanda? Like rather than having, I'll just send things to Amanda because I'll be creating all of our assets and gathering up our information and I'll just send it to Amanda and CC you. Yeah, that'd be perfect. Yeah. Great. So if you guys are okay with that, we'd really like to start promoting your BIA because we are Clearview now. So when you're having an event, just send it along and uh, let me know and we'll post it out on our Facebook. We'll help promote you all your events Great. and see what we can do, right? Sounds Work good. together. We get a lot farther that way. Absolutely. Absolutely. Awesome. Fantastic. All right. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Kelly. Thanks for coming out and joining us and telling us all about the stuff that you guys are doing. All right. Thank you for uh, having me tonight. Appreciate it. I'm okay. here if you need me, just email president at Clearview Chamber and uh, I'll get back to you for sure. Fantastic. Thanks. Thanks. Night. 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 Okay, great. So I'm going to move on. I sort of skipped ahead a bit. So we're going to back up a bit um, and we're going to go to 7.1, which is Three more nights. So um, drum roll, please. <laughs> I'm making everything move on the table. You should see around me, all the candles are doing this. <laughs> um, we are um, pleased to present a presentation that Sarah has so graciously put together. I have to say, thank you, Sarah. You've really been putting a lot of volunteer hours into this. So um, it's, it's really uh, noticed, but I think Cremo Nights is something people are really excited to hear and talk about. So this is our first preliminary presentation and I'm gonna hand it over to you, Sarah. And Sarah, Linda. you even got the lights there and we're gonna like put them up yeah, for you. Crazy, right? all <laughs> <laughs> it's all about the lights. Yeah. Okay, so um, this, the conversation around Cremo Nights was sort of precipitated by um, an, an, a grant application um, that's available right now. So that's why, just to give you context as to why we're talking about this right now, 
Uh, Linda sent it to me and I was like, oh, Creamore Nights might fall really nicely into this category. So let's go to the board and see if it's something that we want to do for next year. And let's start working on this. So with that, just so that you understand why we're talking about this right now. I who's, just, sorry, who's the grant through, Sarah? Linda, can I get you, because I know that's fresh in your mind. You reviewed it today. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that? I can't remember. Linda? Okay, yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, it was through the same people that did the, wait a minute, I don't have it open right now. Um, I think basically through the government, through Ontario and... Um, was it Tourism Ontario? It's not Tourism Ontario, no. Wait a minute, where do I have it? This this grant is specifically for for the small towns yeah. and municipalities, yeah. Because I think it came through the digital Main Street at the same at the time, and mm. they sent it on afterwards also. And um, yeah, it it just looks really interesting. I can't find giving it. away large chunks of cash and it has to be over a two-year program uh two year is that true linda two years yeah it's two years so it would it will have started so it it counts from anything that was done from june 2021 we can basically back hash to that time and and get funds for that time and then on into 2022 and, yeah yeah, uh, yeah. So for bigger projects, it's act that was the activator and the think, right? It was there was the activator and the accelerator. And I think that this is the activator. The activator. Yeah. And regardless of this particular um, where we land in terms of this particular grant, what we were hoping to do was just really talk to the membership, talk to the board, flesh out the concepts so that we can start building the partnerships that we need to do this without it being a stress on our board and our committee like it has been in the past. So just now's the time to discuss it and figure it out. Then we can get funding. Even if we don't, this grant doesn't work for us. I, I feel fairly confident, especially after kind of sitting down and doing this presentation, that we will be able to find the money whether, or we'll be able to scale back some of the elements of the programming if we decide that we want to do this, if it's a value to our membership, and if we have the appetite for all the labor that this would take. So, um, you know, generally 2019, I think that as a first year project, we had great response from the community. The business community, I think at the time was tepid in terms of what it provided uh, because they didn't see a lot of day of sales. But I do think over the past year um, that they have seen the value of the community building that this project did. Um, because I can tell you now as a retailer, I, I talk to people all the time that have moved to this community because they've heard that we do these sort of things that are happy to support local businesses that are involved in these sort of things. So it's a little bit of a circuitous marketing tool and a circuitous way to gain sales, but I personally believe very strongly that it has worked. So um, you can see at the bottom of the presentation or on the bottom of this thing here, like some of the feedback from our members, whether it was perfect for showcasing our village's warmth and community spirit and welcoming new, new visitors. So, um, you know, in 2019, that's what we set out to do. I think we did it. <coughs> and now we're ready to uh, try it again. Yeah. Did, so, did you have some sort of like a metric set up for measuring like new visitors or like? Did you have any way of staging? We have a lot of images that helped us understand. We did do a count on each night and how many people, at least I did when I was responsible. So um, because it's come and go, not always super easy, but, um, you know. did a count as well. That's right. Mm -hmm. And also we did surveys afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. All the, um, businesses. Yeah. So we do have quite a bit of documentation about how the event was perceived, the sort of activities and events that the different businesses liked, the ones that they felt had value, that sort of thing. So we did get quite a bit of feedback. Mm -hmm. Okay, 
So moving on, Kayla, if you want to go to the next slide. This is Kayla. Okay. <laughs> okay. So this year or in 2022, should we decide to do this? There's certain things that we have to get um, in order to make it happen. We need to build our volunteer base to make sure that we can do these activities. We need to use all of our event planning skills, everything that we learned to make it so that it's smoother. We need to uh, ensure that we have all the partnerships in place with community groups and organizations as well as municipal staff to make sure that we are all working efficiently and not killing ourselves. And I think the most exciting thing and perhaps the thing that plays into the grant that Linda uh, so kindly has brought to our forward to us is that we can aid in developing the Village Greens um, programming for next year <coughs> and work really well with them. So with their first year in business or in, you know, in the community building business, I think that it's really fun if we can go to them with an existing project, mm. knowing what we know and working together with them. So I, that, that part really excites me. Um, did you, would you like to hold comments to the end and just do the presentation or should we comment? I'm happy with whatever. I mean, this is just really draft and preliminary so that we yeah. can have a conversation. So if it's fresh, let's talk. Okay, because the one glaring thing missing from this page that I see is sponsorship and hired people that will um, manage this. Like, because the thing that I heard from all you guys when you were running this is how everybody was so exhausted and it was way too much work and way too much time. And it seems to me you'll need somebody like a hired person to, yeah. to take so care of so I think we've in this particular slide, it's kind of like the soft way of saying that we're going to be hiring people and asking for help. But yeah. you'll see, like in the budget, it actually shows like we have two hundred dollars for security. We have two hundred dollars for a bar manager. We have uh, two hundred dollars for a cleaning crew. So you will see those numbers do come through for mm -hmm. sure. And this is kind of the this is the soft sell kind of oh, okay really yeah <laughs> but yeah. it's because when your, your first point was build volunteer base i'm like oh my god like you just might as well butt your head against a cement wall over and over and over again i mean i know you have to do it and i know it can happen but i think it's so important to have somebody who's got their yeah you know, their and that's where, that's where the partnership yeah. with the village green ensure yeah. you know ensure that we use the our resources to our best that's basically saying like we're gonna hope that the municipality will help us with some of it and we'll spend money so that the work gets done so yeah. yes don't worry oh, in the awesome. budget <laughs> and um if you feel like if we feel that i haven't made that sound strong enough knowing that then i can revisit the words that's really helpful jackie thank you yeah and I, and I think the other the other key point too, and I think Sarah said it, but I'll just sort of reiterate it, is that the, the, there is going to be such a person that will be hired next year by the Village Green, whether it's called a program coordinator or a community coordinator, whatever that person's title ends up being, we're mm. really hoping that part of their job responsibility will be the implementation and execution of this type of event. So we really see it as a partnership between the BIA and the Village Green. Mm -hmm. yeah. We'll be using stage for some of these events and mm -hmm. um you know also the downtown um area the bia area will be used for some of the events so it's going to be a mix but also really um having that person who it is their full-time job to implement you know um events and activities we really see ourselves partnering with them yeah that that's what i thought so i I was hoping to hear that, but um i didn't see that in here and i was like whoa wait a minute <laughs> so well, yeah. i guess we're, Sarah's right, we're doing a soft sell because we we haven't actually spoken to um, <laughs> just yet, so. <laughs> and this, this, sorry, this, is, this is meant for your grant application. This isn't like a selling yeah. it membership. Oh, okay, gotcha. Okay. The grant application for this particular project, although we do have to talk to the foundation prior, I think, but yeah, the grant sure. application is due at the end of the month. So we had to move fast and this yeah. is sort of, these things are all doable and attainable, um, but we just have to, we can't make promises that we haven't, you haven't yeah, organized yet. Yeah. But I, there's no question in my mind that we'll have all these partnerships in place. I know, I know we'll, in some way, shape or form, we will. Yes, John? Do we know what, at this point in time when uh, when the Village Green is planning on uh, bringing on a coordinator? 
We don't. Um, I can okay. talk to that. Um, I've been in contact with them as the BIA representative for the Village Green for the last year. In fact, I wrote the job description. So um, we are pretty heavily involved in that. But, but as with material delays and some of the delays that they've had with, um, you know, getting the construction done on the park, they've mm -hmm. pushed out the program person a little bit further than they had originally thought. So I think at this point, they're probably looking at winter, um, hiring somebody in the winter to, to start to start in the spring. Perfect. I don't know if it's a Freudian slip, but I have put in, we know, know how to do this. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, don't do this. <laughs> <laughs> I will change that. And if I thought it was a note, I wasn't going to call you out. <laughs> no, <laughs> call me out, man. I threw this together pretty quickly. Like, do you think she meant that? Like, I know, know how to do this. I knew, knew, knew how to do this. <laughs> oh, yo, yo. Anyway, that's hilarious. So we will definitely proofread this before we take it to all the people that aren't watching on YouTube tonight. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Just add a comma and it works. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Always. So, okay. Um, Kayla, do you mind changing? Okay, so then we just kind of did a quick uh, brainstorm uh, based on the feedback that we got for the different programming ideas. So the, the ideas would remain the same in that the idea would remain the same in terms of it being every Friday, July and August with a five to nine time frame with specific times for specific programs, but we came up with the concepts based on what people really liked. They liked an actual programmed activity. Um, generally, they liked the street closure. They liked being able to drink on the street. The restaurants liked being able to serve. The, yeah, and the picnic table. So the idea would be that every single week we'd have the road closure, we'd have the bar, we'd have the picnic tables. And on top of that, we would have some sort of programming. So with an idea of like jazz on mill, we had great response for about Samantha Martin. People really like that style of music. She was the bluesy side of jazz, but we could do something there. Um, creative mill was something to do with art and Lori had a great idea of um, art, creation of art as performance. She has attended an event that sounds like it was great that we could easily rip off. Um, sing along on mill would be something um, where it would be a, exactly like it sounds. I don't even think I need to go over these, but we would be spending real money, bringing real performers with real cafe to the village and that will make a difference. The nights that we were most successful were the nights where we spent money bringing people in. That's when we had the most visitors. That's when our vendors were happiest or when our members were happiest. And that's when our community felt the most pride. So if we can pull the money together, that's certainly what we would like to do. And now with the existing infrastructure at the station or at the station on the green, it's also a lot easier to implement I, Lori and I have memories of Lori and I, or maybe Pete, I can't remember, but rolling that damn stage down the road in the, you know, at 10 o'clock at night. And that is I something that. that we have to do again this year. Thank goodness. So right. I, I feel like it's far more realistic to think that we can implement these things when we have the existing physical infrastructure. So uh, anybody ideas or feedback on programming? I think the other point to mention too is that we're, we we want to look at other local groups to help, like um, Purple Hills. You know, might get involved with like the creative creative nights. You know, they've sort of reached out to us and said they'd like to work with us more. So you know, we can sort of see a partnership there. So you know, there could be some some opportunities to to work. yeah, and things like the Legion if they choose to. Maybe we have yeah, found that we haven't had adequate food service because just the volume. We might be able to lean on somebody like the you know, the, the Legion to do a barbecue or bring barbecue. I think there's so many opportunities. And I think now that we've illustrated what this looks like, everybody can bring their own special set of skills and enthusiasm to the program. Whereas I felt like in 2019, and it's usually the case, you do have to illustrate the model and you do have to kind of capture people's imagination and they give them time to figure out where they fit into the, to the bigger picture. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so that's kind of the programming ideas. We've got lots of ideas there. We're not concerned about that. I also think that if we are using, um, well, I'll talk about it here, funding for fun. So how much is this going to cost? It's gonna cost real money because we do need to hire people. We want quality entertainment. We want it to be excellent. Um, but for the amount of programming that we have planned, and for the benefit to the community, we think this is really reasonable at $55,000. And now we're gonna talk about, so we think that we can get the money through grants. We're hoping for about, um, we're gonna look for grants and maybe working with the municipality, even finding grants of about $20,000, maybe more, um, seek sponsorship to the tune of $20,000 again, and then, we would be responsible with um, money that is from our levy and also from retained earnings for a minimum of $7,000. And then our bar sales are significant and quite helpful in terms of covering some of the costs. So um, I don't know what anybody else thinks. I, I'd love your feedback. This ends up being a zero on the books um, because the goal and you know, how we generally run an event is every dollar we have, we spend, every dollar we don't have, we don't spend and we figure, make it work. So um, any thoughts on spending? Does this seem realistic, unattainable? Do we wanna put more money, less money? Like any, I'd love feedback here. Uh, well, but since you haven't gone after grants or sponsors in the past, Cream or Nights, I think it's a great place to start. We have had sponsors in the past. Last year we had, well, 2019, we had a big, big sponsor um, that put in the majority of the money for the event. So I think sponsors will be okay. easier. So did they come to you or did you go out to find them? They came, um, they came to us, actually. Yeah. Was that yeah. the Purple Hill? The, or that was Agri Farm, yeah. Yeah, the Purple Hill, yeah. 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 So I don't think that we'll have any trouble um, getting the money the other nice thing is that we do have a bit of uh extra cash in the coffers so if you know we're not super successful we we can definitely you know we can amp up what we have but i i feel like there's money out there people are ready to invest in this community um and with partnerships with the municipality and the foundation this mm -hmm. feels like um good value for anybody who wants to express their interest in the community i think, I think the other key key role the way sarah sort of set up the um the sort of foundation of this whole money budgeting is that we want this event to be sustainable beyond this board so i think that's mm -hmm. the other thing is that you know we may all not be here um come another year from now and then if this is sort of set up this way, it's not us stealing all the coffers from the BIA re retained earnings, but in fact, setting up a model so that yeah. you know, we have like a grant program, we have a sponsorship program yeah. and that it's sustainable so, because the whole point of this thing is that, you know, we need three years for it really to become known. And then, and then beyond that to, to really, to really grow the event. Yeah. I really, I really like the idea of not relying on the BIA coffers, like to like, put our amount down that we're good for and then work to get the sponsors and the grants. And uh, to me, that's totally makes sense because like you said, going forward, you want it to be sustainable, right? So I love that idea. Yeah. And there's lots of people that will want to sell around cream more. I think we've proven, um, we've proven ourselves as a community over the last year and a half. And I think there will be lots of people who want to give back. I also think there's going to be a hell of a lot of people who want to party on that street. Oh, yeah. So I think, <laughs> I think I, 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 the one thing I feel fairly confident uh, with is that we're going to have people that are ready to support this project. Yeah, yeah. I think so too. Like you mm -hmm. said, it's proven. Yeah. 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 So that's, I think the next one is just the kind of discussion, the discussion thing, like the one thing that Lori and I are like the yin and yang of, and I think it's just because of my background uh, at the paper and not really as a retailer is just kind of that push that we get from our membership in terms of, of seeing immediate sales, and really understanding this from a marketing perspective. Mm -hmm. 
I always believe that a strong community is a strong community, whether it's, you know, socially, economically, whatever. This may look Again, like I say, it might look like a, a pretty tangential way to get to improving the BIA and making our businesses stronger. But um, I'm gonna have to come up with a better way to, to, to express this with everybody. But I think, I also think we that having to... everybody bonding with that main street, bonding with each other and um, enjoying those special times together will make our business community stronger. And I think we need something that we did a learning last year was, you know, really getting more buy-in from our members and really communicating with them a little bit better from the outset yeah, and really understand expectations and what they want to get out of it. Because, you know, we were all running so fast yeah. to get these events off the ground in, in six weeks in 2019. And it was eight major events in six weeks that we planned. And it was just so much work that I think, oh, I think we overlooked some of the membership side of things. And I think we want to start out by thinking of the membership foremost in our minds and making sure that this is something the membership is really excited about and wants to be part of. Yeah. So if we're generally, you know, if we generally as a board feel like this is something that we want to um, commit to, then the next step would be reaching out to the membership, really understanding if there is the interest there understanding um, what we can do in terms of partnering with the foundation, understanding what's going to, what we can do with the municipality, that sort of thing. But, uh, mm. but this is the place to start talking about it. Mm. So, so the, the surveys you did after um, the feedback from the businesses, obviously it was good. Sales increased. Like it was a, so that's where the metrics like, no sales did not increase the restaurants. Mm. Yes. Restaurants loved it. No question. Yep. You ask Malin, you ask Nancy, you ask the Millhouse. It's awesome. And that's four very important members, right? Like mm -hmm. there's no that many. So Jen, I mean, your experience. Oh. But my know. feeling is honestly, not every event is, is going to benefit every business, right? Mm -hmm. like, every yeah. So I'm when, losing your, I can't hear you, Jen. Sorry, you can't always increase everybody's business with an event you know yeah. like yeah. I think it was really important for the restaurants and I agree with the bonding and putting our name on the map like all those things are important and those things help visitors return to the town and that's exactly. what's important yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Jen, we've lost you you know it may not be that day that you do better in sales but it, you know that there might be someone that comes with a group of ladies in a few weeks and my sales improve from that visit, you know, to town. So, well, maybe, maybe because surprisingly enough, this is an event that we're not doing two weeks before the event. So you have to <laughs> what? Right? Which one is crazy. Objectives, <laughs> one of our objectives, objectives but, is to improve the way that we do this. Yes, so we know yeah. that a longer lead time, better communication. Yeah. Um, it's just going to make it so that we can get the money. I mean, we really, yeah. it, we were, we were kind of like the, the cart like the horse chasing the cart last time where we were given the money and then we're like, okay, now what are we going to do? It Go. Yeah. yeah. So I think, I think the, the benefit though of starting this early, thank God, because that's the way we should have done it always is um, that now you have time to maybe pull in. How do we actually drive sales to the businesses now that day of like, how do we get them on board with some sort of marketing plan for each of the events so that they can actually increase their sale? Because really you can do all the community building, which is, you know, lovely and touchy feely and you can encourage okay. visits down totally. the road, but really after a pandemic in particular, people need sales. Right. Yeah. So that's, that's to me, the only missing key is like, how's what's the direct tie in for the businesses to climb on board like how do we how do we engage them and get them to really benefit from it so they can drive sales and them? engage in it like that this is the thing is we i think last time we just assumed that each and every business would be excited about it and then yeah. they would create their own excitement around their shop whether it's like placing beautiful displays outside staying yeah. open longer i think that that was a false assumption that we made last time mm -hmm. um so we we were talking about everything you know from 
like my cock a doodly idea was like every time you're open late you get to enter a draw and then you win something if you're a business owner like you know that's yeah. the cock a doodly side but there's got to be something that's better and i think one of the yeah. things that would be different this time is in the last time we did this we really focused on just testing the models so we were working with a very mm. regional approach to marketing mm -hmm. so really we we knew that we weren't maybe going to be able to do this to our greatest capacity. So my theory is always like start with friends and family because you know they'll understand. They get it. Yeah. They know. Figure it out in front of them, and then you can take it broader. So this is year. This is our year two. So year mm -hmm. one is test. Year two is refine. Um, <laughs> yeah, refine. And year three is perfection. Right. So mm -hmm. this is the year where we expand the marketing. We have more money for marketing. We have somebody to help us, and maybe mm -hmm. we're going to hope that one of our hopes is that maybe the municipality and Amanda can help us because there's this lead time. She can help us with a lot of that. I know that they're doing so much more in partnership with community organizations when it comes to marketing. Mm -hmm. So we would love to be able to lean on them. And with this kind of lead time, I think it's quite possible. Yeah. This past year, we've had a lot of success in partnering with the municipality for um, marketing in that they were able to apply for grants. We yeah. got, we had a half page ad in, in the hills which we didn't pay for our rack card development was paid for so we've seen how these improved relationships and a little bit of planning can really make anything happen totally. and if you can really nail down your schedule so that the businesses could have it well in advance so they can actually order product and tie into the theme each week and or like at least a few of them at least you know be able to build on the momentum and create some buzz and 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 direct sales and yeah. I mean, for us, in yeah. terms of booking, like here we were, we were trying to book bands and acts three weeks out in the summer. Yeah. That's like, crazy, that's right? Insanity. Yeah. Like, I mean, like people book now for the yeah. summer. Yeah. So if we decide to do this, then it's really great. And yeah. the other thing that Lori was saying about this is if I buy in from the businesses, oh, I got to plug in my computer. Buy in from the businesses can also be like, them supporting a specific concert or something that they feel proud of so that they oh, can yeah. have their name on something and they, they feel like they're doing their own marketing that way. So yeah, I, I totally agree. And those are some of the, you know, those are some of the little niggly things we're super aware of that we really need to figure out. And my hope is that we'll figure it out in conjunction with the business owners and we have that lead time to do this. How, awesome. can, how do you think this will work for you? And then how do we implement the ideas? Because I think they're out there. We have a whole new group of amazing, like we have seen a huge shift. We have at least four new business owners since the last time we've done this. So mm -hmm. I, um, I think that that will make a difference too. And now's the time too, to look at our programming too, because I was saying to Sarah the other night, like, you know, maybe what we could do is, is maybe there is a shopping component before the main event every night, you know, like just all these yeah. sort of ideas, like maybe there is something that says shopping from four to six and then, you know, at six 30, the band starts or whatever it is, but just sort of yeah. really trying to get that sort of focus. So maybe it's not all night shopping, but maybe there's a component of it that yeah. we remind, you know, the business, like, give something back to the businesses. So Sarah's right. We have a lot of time to figure this all out and yeah. we have great feedback from a lot of our newer business members. So I think now's the time to talk to them about it and get their awesome. ideas. Yeah. yeah. Sarah, I have a, a really, really cool drum workshop company from the city. If you're interested in one of those events. And, uh, really Pe yeah, Pede was there. Remember? Yeah, I, heard all, yeah. I heard all about it. it they, sounds, they were incredible. Yeah. And they put on a concert after. So they involve everybody, everybody gets to do the whole jumping, but then they play after and it's like really high energy. It's like an amazing vibe. They're, they're really cool. Yeah. So that's, that's exactly the sort of thing we want. We have a few, yeah. we'll probably want to look at this again, maybe, and talk about like, how much do we want for interactive? How much do we want as performance? But yeah. that does sound awesome. Thank you. Yeah. I'll, I'll pass the contact on. Thank you. 
So I guess what we are kind of looking for in terms of big decisions is whether this idea is good enough for us to actually sit down and look at this grant very closely in the next day or two and write it because that's kind of where we're at. We do what the next step actually would be to go to the community foundation probably because of the timeline of this particular, the way that it's structured, it looks like we could either use some of what we did for chill on mill and we might be able to use that as our year one activity around um you know creating safe space on mill street encouraging longer stays i don't know i have to look at it a little bit closer so those are the two ways that we can approach this um but if we generally like the idea and we're generally kind of happy with the committee which would be struck which i would be the chair and Lori and Linda have agreed to come on the committee. And if we, if the board is comfortable with Lori and Linda and myself seeking sponsorship and um, grants, then, then we have what we need to move forward. If the board is not comfortable with that, then we can either, um, you know, dull things up a little bit so and look at it a little longer if that's what you need for us to move forward or we can scrap it but this is kind of the time to to talk about that yeah. so business owners how are you feeling about that <laughs> it's crazy like it's a lot of work it's a lot of fun like i, I like even me right like I write these things up as concepts, not necessarily because, you know, but I really, yeah. So I'm like, don't be afraid to say this is crazy and we don't want to do it. It's just an idea at this point. And I'm not, I'm honestly happy either way. So I, I think I'm guessing that a lot of business owners who invest time volunteering and are, you know, exhausted and trying to make money as well, um, would probably feel much better about it if we had a solid commitment from a, the programming at the Creamer Community Foundation. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I think I think the way I certainly left this committee in 2019 was I loved the event, I loved the energy, I loved the whole idea behind it, but there was no way in hell I was going to be able to manage it again the way we yeah. managed. Yeah. So it was a total learning. And in fact, before the pandemic in 2020 a couple of us had started the planning for Creamore Nights and I had started to speak to some community event managers about hiring somebody mm -hmm. to actually manage the on-site coordination and the execution of the event so that no BIA volunteer had to actually be the person running out at two o'clock in the afternoon on Friday to put the stage together because it was yeah. just difficult. So I think, I think that the onus has to be on the fact that we need to hire out. That's why there's such a significantly higher budget is that yeah. we have to hire out certain aspects. Yeah. We managed to provide all the programming in 2019, including marketing for $13,000. That Amazing. is just absolutely insane. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, and that is only because of the hard work of the people that put into it. And so we that, that's just, it's just not doable. So. No. We need the partnerships, we need the community support. And mm -hmm. if we don't have it, then it's not a good idea. Like it's, that's kind of what it's it comes down so, to. So have you got a schedule figured out? Like when do you, when's the, when's the deadline to say, okay, we didn't get the money, kill the project. Or like, do you have like a cutoff date or? So I haven't thought through the timeline well enough, but I would want to have everything, like I'd want to have everything booked by March, which would mean that you would, we would need to have the money and the partnerships and everything sort of sewn up no later than kind of uh, mid, yeah, February. Yeah. But I think what we would really need is that initial conversation with, um, the municipality and the foundation because mm -hmm. they're going to be instrumental in terms of resourcing and whether we can you know like that's that's what it really yeah. comes down to so you yeah. know if we go to them now in november and we ask them what their general feelings are and they say no then i think we this is done like this yeah. is dead in water yeah. Yeah. if it's a maybe for them and they've got to look at their finances and stuff and we come back in january and it's a go then 
once we have their partnership, then I would move towards finding the sponsorship mm -hmm. and, um, and kind of working on grants all the way through because <clears throat> the grants are a gamble anyway, right? Yeah. Like you never know if you're going to get them. So you apply for them based on assumptions and hope for the best. The yeah. problem with the grants too, is they take a long time to come back to you usually on these grants. So do you know the deadline Linda? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we have to give it in by the 1st of November. Okay. We no, have and to give you it know in when and then we will be... actually hear within four weeks if we oh. accepted, but that's only for the first year. And the second year is, I thought it was in December. And then also again, like we hear within, within four weeks or something like that, four to eight so, weeks. So if, really, if, really good turnaround time. So yeah. it's well within your deadline of deciding. Exactly. Yeah. So that's great. Yeah. That's yeah. I think they have some money to clear out and, yeah. um, hopefully yeah. if we can move quickly on this grant we might be able to maybe i we can even contact amanda mm -hmm. bias are allowed so the one reason that i'm keen on this grant is because often granting is difficult for us um not difficult for us but it's kind of understood of that the, the municipality applies for grants and we cannot but this one is said it's specifically for bias to apply exactly. for or municipal oh, great so uh well, I guess to communicate with amanda about that and maybe even if she i mean i'm sure she's busy too but um maybe we might even be able to lean on her a little bit mm -hmm. or or at least have her vet it or something because i certainly don't have a lot of experience with grants so so i'm assuming tonight you're just looking for the board to say yes go ahead let's pursue this I, I want the board to be fully aware that we're talking to people about this. And I want, like, if you guys don't think this is a good idea, then I'm, I'm out. Like, you know, I, I need your support to move forward. I, I think also we want to look at maybe striking a committee and putting a motion together to strike a committee. Yes, we need to strike the committee and um, we need to kind of approve the overall concept, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's a little a little bit thin on the details, but if it definitely involves hiring somebody, if that's in there somewhere, then I it would have my full support. So that particular um, that particular uh, ah presentation super thin. I get it, but mm -hmm. um, Kayla, like I will share. We've we sat down. We've drafted an actual budget on each of the events, each of the nights, what it's going to take. So yeah. it is not thin like that underneath awesome. that that skimpy airy fairy thing is there's a lot of numbers mm -hmm. and um and i feel very confident about the numbers and i feel very confident about um i feel mm -hmm. like i have a really clear understanding of what the implementation would look like mm -hmm. i think the other side of it is is that we have we could put in stops all along the way so if we don't get a grant yep that's stop number one. Do we scale it back instead of eight events? Do we do four? You know what I mean? Like, I think, yeah. I think what we should build into our plan is just sort of stop gaps and sort of say, you know what, um, here's where we are with the money. This is what yeah. we can do. So I think they'll have to be sort of plan A and plan yeah, B. Benchmarks, like, we're gonna go, yeah. yeah, obviously we're going to go for plan A, which is all singing, all dancing. Right. Yeah. And, then, uh, and then we'll see what we can get. I think Sarah's right. I feel pretty confident we'll be successful with um, sponsorships, grants, but we don't know. And, um, but sponsorships might actually be higher than we expect. Yeah. And quite frankly, sponsorships are easier than grants <laughs> often like the granting yeah. process and then oh, yeah, the for sure. documentation. I mean, luckily if we document properly from the get go, then it's very yeah. easy to, to report, but, um, yeah. yeah. But and I, I'm thinking too, like if, if you don't rate, if you don't get the grant and you do get more sponsorship, I think it's, I think the key thing that you did so well when you did it the first year is that you did it every Friday in July and August. And to me, it's that consistency. So even if you don't have the full money, I think you should go ahead, but maybe you have a couple that are a lot less expensive. So you Which stay within your budget, but you keep the consistency, right? Which and is that's how we managed manage it, Leah. Yeah, yeah that's how we had pro, that. Like we had game night and we had art night and I can't remember. There were three that were kind of like, you car, know, car show. Yeah. Car show. Yeah. So like, those were, you know, the, those cost very, very little, but absolutely. I agree, Jackie, like the genius of this, that was, yeah. was um, Heather and Lori's genius was just the absolute consistency that people know every Friday night, there is something to do in Creemore and let's just yeah. go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 
John? I, I just wanted to say, uh, I, even involving the grants, um, Ontario, the world has been holed up for almost two years now. Um, <laughs> they want a party. <laughs> Um, and the, the province of Ontario wants to make that happen. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I think there are, are chances on grants right at this point are very, very good. And I got to tell you, I love the concept. Yeah. I like the, 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 the potential of, of what this could do and what this could bring. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I, I, I just love it. Awesome. Well, thanks, John. And that's what we talked about in our little um, planning meeting was that we felt that we know like Ontario Arts Council, all of these different organizations. RTO7. RTO7, they have money. And if we're kind of, I'm calling it shovel ready, like if we're shovel ready with this project and yeah. maybe with the help of Clearview Township, if we do a really good job of creating our decks, creating our budgets, all of these things, we can work closely with Amanda and she can help us. I know she's awesome at it. I'm hoping that we can get support from the township to ferret out the money and the support that we need so that we don't kill ourselves as volunteers. Yeah, exactly. If you, if you, if you want to make it sustainable, it, it can't create a huge burden on, on individuals. It, it, it needs to be sustainable. Yeah. yeah. I am not showing up downtown cream or dripping sweat and <laughs> <laughs> like, like, just, like, like my hair like this and everybody else is like in their linen suits looking posh and like, here Lori and I like we're like we do not look like upstanding business owners in this town we honestly yeah. look like we need to be put away we <laughs> all over the we were sweaty and dirty and <laughs> Anyway, okay, so with that, I'd like to put forward a motion that we strike the committee. I am. I would like to chair that committee. And um, at this point, uh, Lori and Linda have agreed to be on that committee. If there's other, you'd like to be on it too, Jen? That's lovely. I really appreciate that. Um, and I think in the event that we have, um, you know, we might have other people that work alongside with us, the foundation, maybe a man, maybe somebody from Clearview, that sort of thing. But if this is our core committee, I think we've got a killer team. Mm -hmm. I so. so I I'd like to put forward that motion. Okay. Awesome. And do we have a seconder for that motion? Or Kayla, do you want to do you want to wordsmith it? Yeah. yeah. Do you guys want to hear my proposed resolution for you? Yeah. <laughs> so I've tried to take everything that you're talking about and construct it into one resolution. Uh, be it resolved that the Creamore Business Improvement Area Board hereby create a Creamore Knights subcommittee consisting of Sarah, Lori, Linda, and Jennifer to move forward in creating appropriate partnerships and further investigating and apply for appropriate funding. Wow, you nailed it. Perfect. <laughs> Sounds great. That's why we love having staff support right there. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, Kayla. So um, can Sarah can Sarah be the person that puts forward that motion then? Is that correct, Kayla? I don't see why not. Okay. okay. So then what I'm looking for then is a seconder, right? Yep. So somebody want to second that, Jackie? Thank you yeah. very much. And all in favor of the motion. Okay, great. Sounds like it's everyone. Thank you. Motion's been carried. Uh, Pretty and John, <laughs> if, if you feel like at any point, um, maybe you can help us in understanding the best way to communicate with council about that and how you think it might <clears throat> be most advantageous in terms of getting staff support. Do you have any thoughts there? Yeah, Amanda. <laughs> but should we come to council and present yeah, this? Oh yeah, once once you get the package, yeah, once you get the package uh, together, by all means, uh, yeah, I would do a deputation to council. Um, I, I and I hope that that uh, council is as excited about it as I am. And is sooner better than later in seeking the partnership? Okay. Yep. Absolutely. And is it too late to get on November's meeting agenda? Uh, I can't answer that question. Um, 
Kayla? So you can get in in November. Ah, there you go. Okay, so we'll figure that out, but I just think it's important to understand when we talk to people and what kind of, like is council in a position to actually in um, direct council or staff in terms of the way that they support us with this project or is it best just to go directly to staff? I guess that's my question. I would do a two pronged approach personally. Um, I, I, would, uh, I would approach both council uh, and I, I would suggest, yeah, if you went uh, and, and to council first, and but then immediately follow it up with, with staff. Um, okay, well, maybe uh, we'll talk about that, but uh, but you're saying sooner is better, and we'll figure it out in our committee how we can. Well, and, and the, the timing is, is good right now. We're just uh, moving into budget deliberations as well so your, your your timing is good okay perfect so the sooner that we can talk about it so if the municipality does kind of want to put some money towards it they can yeah i was just going to say john do you think there's an opportunity video. From the municipality sorry sorry I'm, do you think there's an opportunity for us to ask for money for the from the municipality for this event it never hurts to ask yeah. the worst they can do is say no <laughs> yeah. okay well, yeah I, yeah, I think that, I, yeah, I would certainly encourage you to do that. Okay, great. Awesome. Great. Terrific. Here we go again. Okay, guys. Ugh. Exciting stuff. Ugh. Thanks, <laughs> Linda. Thanks a lot. Yeah, thanks, Linda, for <laughs> to our inboxes. Now we're, One of now Linda's we're... first experiences in this community was square dancing on the main street. <laughs> That's <laughs> right. It's <laughs> a successful event. <laughs> and you're still here and you bought a business <laughs> all because of the hoedown on three more nights <laughs> no, exactly. already bought the business all <laughs> the hoe. but i stayed <laughs> <laughs> you didn't run away <laughs> going to be <laughs> okay. okay awesome okay so let's uh let's uh i don't know what time it is yeah okay let's get going so let's talk about um our past wonderful event this summer chill on mill clean up and storage um uh, i just it's it's a quick uh quick agenda item just to say where are we going to store everything linda's got signs i think should we dispose of those signs they have the dates on them right they don't have the dates on them no but it is fairly specific for this year but we could always use the backs of them and i think i have some a-frames and stuff so i'm hope i was just going to try and tuck them into a log cabin with yeah. the tears Awesome. Maybe we could put the carts in the log cabin as well, because I was going to ask somebody if they could store them in their barn or in their garage or something, because um, Michelle's asked me to move the two carts that are sitting in his property off his property okay. last I, week. So I will connect with Pat and Chris and let's get all that stuff over there. Um, yeah. I'm uh, happy to bring it all over. It's just they're not, they're not going to be using the, the cabin until May 2 for weekend, so we can do some plans. So I'll contact Pat and Chris and let's Let's store that stuff. Yeah, if you can shoot me a text, I could I could swing by Linda's place one night. I could swing by Michelle's with the pickup truck, and I could just bring it all over if there's a night after work. Okay. Could yeah. The on them. Okay. Great. Okay, so that's the cleanup and storage. Was there anything else for Chilla Mill, Linda, that you wanted to? No, just that's pretty much it. Just yeah. all the barriers and everything have been picked up. So that's great. A, a little bit of good news is that I think I mentioned it very briefly, but we were reimbursed for some of our expenses uh, by the municipality, thanks to some granting. So that was really terrific. I saw that even more expenses than we had originally planned. So that's awesome. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, 7.3 I have is Halloween. Um, sorry, I'm a little bit uh, behind the eight ball on this one. Jen, do you have any updates on Halloween? No, actually. Um... Yeah, I haven't talked to Norma or the Legion. I can check in with them tomorrow. Are, are we doing the trick-or-treating on Mill Street this year? Yeah, Mill yeah. Street trick-or-treat. And I should put all that out tomorrow. In the past, what we've done, it's super chill on Mill. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we just put the ad in. And then we've been in touch with, um, I guess this is kind of, I guess we're not voting on it. Anyway, we've been in touch with all the businesses about... Oh supporting an ad around um, that. So hopefully within that context, we've told them all that Mill Street trick-or-treat is uh, 
is happening and I will post something to the Facebook group. Um, I'm just making the assets right now. So. So I can follow that up with an email. So if there's MailChimp, like stuff you guys want in, in sort of like a newsletter -y type thing that I do, those MailChimps, um, that'd be great. I haven't done one in a while. So it'd be great to kind of stick that in there. Okay, so it's kind of like, is it like five to-, five to seven, it's the Sunday night. So five to whenever the businesses wanna close basically. The Legion is doing something. They're doing something at the- uh, at the funeral home. No, besides the funeral. <laughs> oh, are they really? Oh, cool. yeah. Parking lot at the funeral home? Yeah, they're, yeah, they, they, they're doing this. So I don't know what that's going to be like, but I was like, well, that's scary. <laughs> that's appropriate. Are you going to include that in the echo, Sarah? Yeah, okay. we will include that. And I know that they're going to do a little, a bit of promotion themselves too. So um, does the BIA need to approve funds for Halloween um, promotion? No, the BIA, so we, the echo, I, Ooh, I have to, I have to disclose an interest here. <laughs> I can't remember how it was billed in the past, but I definitely know at least uh, the main week, which is next week is entirely covered by advertisers that it isn't something that the BIA traditionally has been billed for. It's a okay. community supported ad. Um, okay. That's what I wanted to check in was um, if we are paying for an ad for Halloween. The BIA. Uh, no. You're going to say no. I can't say anything. I think I have to disclose. Oh. <laughs> like, I don't know. This is where it gets really complicated. Okay. So basically it sounds like in the past, you've done one of those one page yeah. things where all the um, businesses kind of put like yeah, a little yeah, business cover the all yeah. around it sort of thing. And, and then um, that, that typically pays for the entire page plus the color. Yeah. Yeah. So it sounds like the BIA doesn't need to approve funds for an ad. However, if that doesn't end up working out, we may have to, to have those funds approved. Well, it's kind of something we do on spec. So, um, yeah, yeah. I, okay. it's all taken care of. Okay. Okay. Great. So that's, I think it for events, which that's a big kind of section. So thanks everyone for, for getting through all that. Um, any public participation tonight, Kayla, did you have anybody wants to speak? No. Okay. Financial report, the treasurer's report. That's back to you, Sarah. You do an awfully lot here tonight. Um. I'm sorry, I'm sticking <laughs> my own voice, honestly. Um, we're in great shape. I sent out the financials last week, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess, can we just, I can update those and attach them. We have some areas of underspending or places that we can, uh, I can just kind of, we have lots of money left in marketing. We're on track for spending in terms of the Santa Claus parade. Um, all of the streetscape is in line with what was budgeted, but really where we do have money still is in the marketing department. So if there are projects or ideas that we want to implement, maybe um, the marketing committee can take a little look at what's there. And, and know that they have a lot still sitting in their particular um, in their particular bank of little coins of fun to be had in the marketing department. So um, that's yeah. great. Um, so yeah, we, didn't, we haven't done a lot of spending obviously because of COVID. So, um, but that's good because it looks like, you know, we've got plans to spend it in the next year too. Um, thanks Sarah for the financial report update. Um, in terms of the marketing update, uh, does anyone know somebody who might want to look after our Instagram program? Because as you know, Joey has gone to university, <laughs> our um, wonderful Instagram manager. And so there's a vacant sort of position there, volunteer likely, maybe a small stipend if you know anyone or if you want to manage the Instagram for Creamore. It's a whole lot of work actually, but um, can be quite rewarding. I think we may have to find somebody that can do this, that we can just, um, you know, hire. 
Joey did a great job for us for the last two years. Most of it was volunteer work. Um, we did pay him a small stipend at one point, but uh, over two years, I think we paid him $600. So yeah, crazy. Uh, he did an amazing job for us. He's uh, now gone to university. And uh, although he insists that he still wants to do it, I think it's really hard <laughs> to ask him while he's at university to keep up with our Instagram. <laughs> so I think I'm going to have to start searching um, for somebody. And if anybody has any, anybody that does Instagram for their business, or you have a social media contact or something, I'd be happy to, to speak to them. If not, I'll be looking on my own, I suppose, Thanks. for that sort of thing. Um, Okay, trademark logos and taglines. Jackie, you wanted to mention something about this. Oh um, yeah, so I, I had, when I had been approached by a woman who's starting a business in Cremor and she's doing uh, Cremor souvenirs memorabilia with Cremor all over everything. Um, and we certainly can't stop her from running a business, of course, but uh, I think things like using our tagline of the little village with the big heart, things like that, that we may want to trademark that in use with Creamer, as well as the graphics that we have, we should. The township is, um, their logo is trade, you know, the Cleary Township logo is trademarked. There's no reason that uh, the Creamer BIA shouldn't have theirs being, and we're an arm of council, right? We're, um, so I think it, that would, I, I, tall, I called Doug Measures just to, try and understand the legalities of that and how that and the logistics of that. And I believe it would probably have to be done through council, like through um, their lawyers and everything. And I don't think um, the BIA would pay for it. I think it would have to go that way through council because we are ultimately owned by Clearview Township. So if we want to trademark that, it becomes property. I mean, it already is property of Clearview, um, but we should make that uh, official. And so that we could actually, I mean, I, I mean, the designs I saw didn't show our logo or anything, but um, it, it just kind of makes me feel like, well, what if somebody wanted to take that and put it on t-shirts and cups and sell it? We'd have no recourse whatsoever if it's not trademarked. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if anybody has any will or desire to um, see that move ahead, but to me, it's kind of a, it's kind of an important piece if, if the BIA is going to invest in marketing and we do every year. And um, especially if you're going to do a higher and higher profile events, if you're going to do eight, you know, eight or nine Fridays of, you know, much more expensive uh, concerts and marketing, then, you know, at some point somebody's going to want to cash in on it. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think if anybody should cash in on it, We've got the lovely logo and the taglines. If you, if the BIA wants to put merchandise out, we should, and we should uh, put that profit into our funds. But I don't think anybody else should cash in on it. So. Yeah, we did. We did talk about that for Creamore Nights too. Is is having yeah. our own merchandise for the BIA that that we would sell with Creamore logo and things like that on it. Yeah. So I think it's kind of like a perfect time to be bringing that up. Yeah. Um, well, do you know if that's the clerk's office that we go through for something like that? Or um, I, I would be happy to. Um, figure that out if you uh, if there is desire to go ahead with that. I'm happy I'm happy to help you work on that because I think it's awesome. important and I think it's okay. important for future BIAs because you have invested in artwork and taglines and things like that that they are protected and they're not maybe used in a way we don't want to see them used. Yes, so, exactly. Yeah. And just the clarity in terms of it, it that it, I think it's really helpful these things don't have to seem punitive as much as just there's real clarity around it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. John, did you have a question? Yeah, um I can understand the uh, the, uh, the want or even the need uh, to, uh, to uh, trademark. Um, don't have an issue with that. The only thing I'm, I'm going to suggest is um, you might want to think long and hard of, about limiting um, external buy-in. Um, if someone else is, is you know, willing to uh, promote the uh, the Cremor BIA, I personally think power to the mess. Mm -hmm. Me, I, I, I think well, that's I a mean, wonderful thing. Like I have hats that have Cremor on them, but they don't say like Cremor Village with the big heart and then have the logo on them. And like Dufferin County okay. Good does bags or, or t-shirts that Lori sells that mm -hmm. say cream more. But I do think like really like that Celtic heart is something that we've done the snow globe, all of these yeah. things. So, and I actually had somebody kind of propose that they use 
the snow globe as something that they would sell. And I was kind of like, I don't really think that's cool. No. <laughs> so I, I <sighs> So I think there's the two elements, which is the actual artwork that we've created to date that belongs to us. And yeah. then I mean, people are going to, Creamore is now, is a brand and people are going to use it, but yeah. to protect our artwork. And, and I think John, John, to like, to your point, it's like, I don't think we would stop anybody who was uh, promoting it positively the way we wanted it to, but it just gives us legal clawback if they started using it the way we didn't want them to. Exactly. And that's why I, I, I said I could understand the, the, the idea of having ownership of it mm -hmm. and that therefore it gives you control of it but mm -hmm. but if it's being marketed in a positive way boy i'd encourage that <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> just yeah, for sure and i mean that's already happening right so there's already lots of lots of stuff out there like sarah said with cream on it and um but i think it is our artwork we do invest a lot in our artwork over the years actually mm -hmm. and um, yeah, it is nice to protect it. Should we yeah. should we ever want to use that recourse? Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Jackie, for bringing that up. Um, Jackie, Excuse do you, are you Taylor, to do we need to um, make uh, a motion or a resolution to start a committee to investigate trade? No, I I don't believe that you need a committee to further investigate it, but I would absolutely suggest reaching it to the clerk, as mm -hmm. she'll have a better understanding and uh, especially kind of help you walk through. Some of okay. those things that Councillor Broderick's talking about, similar to the way that uh, Clearview Township's uh, brand and logo is protected. Awesome. Thank you. So we don't need a motion then to start the investigation process. We can just sort of start the research. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. okay. So Jackie, do you want to reach out to um, Sasha or do yeah, you want to, to the to the clerk? Yeah. I'm I'm happy to help with that. So if you want to copy me, I'm happy to be okay. part of it. Awesome. From the marketing perspective. Okay, great. Um, thanks, Jackie. Um, now we've got new business, unfinished business. We've already spoken to the Clearview Chamber of Commerce. Uh, the continuation of virtual meetings. I don't know, did, did everybody get those emails or was it just me and maybe I forgot to forward them? Um, there is there is a um, the, an email that was circulated, I think last week from Simcoe County about having the continuation of virtual meetings they really didn't feel that at this time it was the right time for us to be meeting and having in-person meetings. So they sort of put out a memo um, saying that all, all local committees and, and boards should continue to meet virtually um, from now on, as far as I know, until <laughs> yeah. they tell us not to. <laughs> so we're told different, yeah. So we're not, uh, we're still meeting by Zoom and by phone and uh, all these other fun things for now. So that's, um, I think that was just, was, Kayla, was there anything else you want to mention about that or we're good? No, that's perfect. You nailed that one on the head. We're no change, basically. Um, vaccination policy, I, I oh, saw- Oh, Sean has something to say. Oh, sorry, I was looking down, yep. Yeah, I, I just wanted to, to say it at uh, council, uh, we had voted to uh, continue the, uh, the virtual meetings um, at least until January. Okay, until January, yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, we will- um, it would be nice to have. I was thinking tonight, you know, if this was our typical Halloween meeting, we would probably be eating Halloween candy together. <laughs> <laughs> Fun. And that would actually give us the sugar we need to get through the two hours of a lot of administration. <laughs> okay, so we'll move on to 11.3. We're almost there, guys. Hang in there. Um, vaccination policy. I think uh, Kayla and the clerk's office sent out a vaccination policy memo. And thanks, Sarah. I noticed you put some comments there that I didn't originally catch is that um, they're asking all boards and committees that are meeting in township spaces to be vaccinated. Is that correct, John or Kayla? Um, yeah, so essentially to move forward and get out of these virtual meetings and be eating candy with everybody, um, they will all be in public spaces of township owned facilities. So they're just doing their due diligence to try to make sure that that happens sooner rather than later. Um, if you have any questions about the, the vaccination policy or its process or submitting any documentation, please reach out to Tammy Gill. She's our HR manager, and she would be happy to go over any questions, concerns that you might have. Uh, it seems to be pretty standard practice across the board through all levels of government at this point. In terms of if we have other people that are working with us on projects um, they are volunteers, but we're not 
going to be going into facilities, do we have to get them to send in their information as well? My understanding is anybody who's volunteering as part of the township will That's require it. A declaration. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Fun times. Fun times during the pandemic. Okay, so that's the vaccination policy. Okay, so that brings us to our next meeting, which is November 9th. We might need to meet, I don't know, before that, if we have to talk about the shopping. I don't know where we landed on. Are we going to have a shopping event on the weekend um, in November, or do you want to just do White Wednesday? I'm still a little unclear on that, to be honest. Um, to just so review, so to review what's what happened last year, we did the baskets and okay. so I don't know that's something that we did um, and I, I haven't experienced the shopping Sunday since I opened. So I, I mean, don't know. Quite a lot of work to, to plan it. Um, do you guys see value in doing a shopping Sunday or a shopping Saturday? Um, Linda, Jen, I'm kind of looking at you guys, Sarah as well. I, I have no opinion. I don't know. Jen? Oh, I can't hear you. Can't hear you. Good? No. Okay. Yeah, you're back. Okay. No? Yeah. I don't know what's going on with it. It's been a while since we've done one. Um, I know the last time, I think, was just on a Friday evening, and it was okay. Like, I, I don't remember. Actually, Lori, having one. Really, was our last really big one the reindeer? Or was there one in between that? I think the last big one might have been the reindeer on the Sunday. Famous reindeer? I missed it. We were away. Singular. Yeah. We may not do reindeer. <laughs> I like reindeer. <laughs> oh, so much feedback about the reindeer. But um yeah, it's so much feedback. What, uh, what do you, like, I'm just, you know, if we're going to do this, we kind of have to get started. And the other thing is, is it worth, do we think that there's value for the retailers in this? It would probably be Saturday, maybe November 27th or November 28th. Those are the sort of dates before the Santa Claus parade. Do we want to do something on the date of the Santa Claus parade? Like my, my, my feeling about the Santa Claus parade is that everybody kind of comes into town in the morning, watches the parade, and then disappears really quickly right after the parade's over like at mm. two o'clock the town is empty and there's not a single soul around mm -hmm. um oh here's something i forgot to bring up uh natalie is interested in perhaps uh coordinating a gift wrapping a volunteer run gift wrapping area so we would supply the gift wrap and then if me people make purchases in Creemore, then they can take it to this gift wrapping station and she would be happy to coordinate different community organizations who would then wrap gifts for a donation. And she, so that might be something that um, could be seen as a Christmas incentive or something fun to promote um, throughout Christmas. And it wouldn't- Is that, it's, you're talking parade day, like on parade day? Uh, I think the dates would be determined, but oh. I think that it's something that she's very interested in coordinating. She has done it with success in other locations and she thinks that she could find the space and the volunteers. So Do uh, people pay for the gift wrapping? I think it would be done uh, as a free will offering um, to the different organizations that would actually be there doing the wrapping. So I know she's talked to some of the volunteers with the Horticultural Society and you can imagine what a beautiful job they would do. So this mm -hmm. might help us to create those, you know, those relationships. She, anyway, uh, there would probably be, you know, a small amount of money where we would buy gift wrapping um, stuff and that would be our our thing and then we could promote it uh, throughout the course of our Christmas stuff that you know that we're doing the parade we're doing the tree lighting there's free gift wrapping on Saturdays you know like that that might be something that's fairly easy to implement and kind of fun and a nice incentive where so, where would the gift wrapping take place I think she's talking to Noel to see if we could use the meat market That'd be great. Yeah, that'd be, great. that'd be awesome. I think it's a great idea, actually. I, I love the idea. I'm yeah. just I'm just really stuck on whether I'm organizing like a shopping event or 
do we just do every shopping Saturday and there's free gift wrapping and maybe there's music on the street, like piped music on the street every Saturday or something. Do we just try and do it a little bit longer than a one day event? I'm really stuck on this. I don't uh, know where we are. Yeah, free free gift wrapping through a, like every Saturday or whatever you decide is yeah, that's a, for all of December. That's that's a no brainer. That makes sense. That's that a good promotion. Fun. I think it looks really good on us to yeah. to to coordinate that, and I think there's real benefit to everybody involved. I think it would be fun too. Yeah. So maybe instead of a one day shopping event, like we've done before, like, cause I know evening events are really hard to get people out to. I mean, I'd love to do candlelight shopping or something like that, but it just, it's just too hard to get people to come out at night. So, and I know there's the, the white Wednesday, which is great, but I know that a lot of our retailers won't be open on Wednesdays. So they probably want something, you know, Saturdays. So we could just do something like every Saturday in December, there's something going on like free gift wrapping. I don't know if we could convince somebody to offer hot cider or something like that. Um, I don't know what we can do. We could maybe try and put music on the street, even if it's just piped Christmas carols or something like that. Where are you guys at on this? Does anybody want to work on it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that's what we need is somebody who's inspired. Things I don't mind doing if we see value in it, I don't know if we do or not. Last year, people, we did get a ton of those ballots turned in. I don't know if it encourages people or if it's just something to hang marketing on. I don't know. Um, I didn't, we, we did get a ton of those turned in. Yeah, I didn't get the, I, I'm not a fan of those. I'll just be honest. I think yeah, they're it's, in the butt, aren't they? Like you've got the person where you're trying to check out and people are filling ballots. Okay. We got a lot of them. I did. I have no opinion about that myself. I'm not mm. that interested in it. Okay. Yeah. It was, like, it was like a passport kind of thing and, and people could win, win a gift basket, but I just had people running in, getting a stamp on their passport and not, not shopping. Around, no, so. no. This was the passport from a couple of, last year we, in lieu of the shopping oh, day. We did right. is if you made a purchase in Cremor at one of the stores during a certain period, you were entered into a draw. I'm happy to coordinate that because it's not a big deal if people see value in it, but I don't know what your experience was with that. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, we could do something like that as well. Is that, is, is that an effective marketing tool? Like, does that help with marketing? I don't know. You know, what might may, may be kind of cool is if, if Noel does give you the space to do the free gift wrapping, what if, um, we put a bunch of, uh, cream or gift baskets ready for sale together that were for sale there and that represented, uh, items from lots of the businesses, like from all the businesses. The other thing we could sell too would be actual Cremor BIA gift certificates. So yeah. that said, um, which I have been doing, I sold a bunch to the Georgian Triangle Humane Society. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, we could put together $50 gift certificates and people could maybe buy those there. Um, yeah. Yeah. Because, I mean, coordinating the gift baskets where you go around to each store and buy something. Oh, yeah. Like, no, no, no. I, I don't know. Like, uh, what if, what if it, what if they just put it in the basket and just marked it down? If a basket sells, they get paid for it. If it doesn't sell, it goes back to them. I don't know. So, but would, would it be each business would put in a basket of their own or would it be a, an amalgamated basket of, from all the businesses? I don't know. I think an amalgamated one would make more sense at the gift wrapping station than just because you could do at each business, if it was everything from one business, you could just have it at your business for sale. That would make sense. I guess it comes down to what Lori said is who wants to do it. Yeah, and how yeah. to sort and how to keep it all sorted as to who gets what for what. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I like the gift certificate idea. Yeah. <laughs> I do think that might be the easier. Yeah. So maybe we do um, free gift wrapping station, Give you know, people can buy BIA gift certificates. We could do a draw for a, a BIA gift certificate, like Sarah's saying, like with purchase. the idea of purchasing them for sure. Number, you know, with purchase, you get a ballot to enter a draw to win a BIA gift certificate. Um, because you know. that's that's something we're offering them. Then, yeah, then we have a couple little things that we can actually publicize. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and um, I don't know if we can do music or carolers or something like that if there's any any interest in something like that. I know it's always been done before and it's a bit tired. Um, it's like, if you're doing something, you have to do something big or just 
keep it. I know. Like, if, like, just, if you just had piped holiday music on the street, like it would be so great, right? Like you don't, you don't need to have live music or carolers, but just if there is actual music that you can hear when you're outside walking from store to store, like call it like Christmas music, that would be yeah. awesome. I don't have any idea how to do that. Do I have to call? <laughs> it was your idea though. <laughs> I know, I know, because I think it's a great idea, but I have no idea, like even how, like, do I get like, I don't even know. Maybe Heather can help me from the brewery. <laughs> Good idea. Let's ask Heather to be in charge of that. I make a motion for Heather, everybody in favor. Is Heather the president now? She didn't show up. Now yeah, she's yeah, she is. <laughs> Can we tell you, Heather? All right, we voted. Yeah, Lori wants you to be the president. She's unanimous. Done. Um, yeah, okay. So let me look into that. I will sort of coordinate some of this. Um, yeah, I think it would be great if we could just do Saturday, you know, throughout December kind of thing programming. Yeah posted just one solid day where we do a lot and then our our holiday we're going to do posters again right sarah for the the valley yeah. christmas in the valley and then it can sort of say on the posters all that we're doing and then maybe that's better than a one-day event during covid anyway i know that's why we canceled it last year just yeah. in case things are different i don't know maybe they don't want gatherings again who knows but um you know we can we can just sort of do that i know it's a lot of work if if christmas is anything like it was last year we might just be so inundated with people we may not even need a lot of promotion like last year we were you know it was insane right like it was well was that wasn't insane. normal <laughs> <laughs> somebody decided to close most of 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 you know southern ontario businesses except for small towns like us so everybody from the gta in toronto decided to come shopping last year in Cremor. Oh, no i bought twice as much stuff this year thinking that that was what i should expect again <laughs> I'm sure all of Toronto come to Cremor to go shopping was unbelievable, but yeah. uh, I don't know if that'll happen again. So we'll see. <laughs> hope so. Yeah. Wouldn't it be nice? Okay. So I'll put that together and I'll circulate that around and we'll do, we'll go with the free gift wrapping, the draw when entering for a gift certificate and possibly music that Heather mm -hmm. will coordinate. So, um, okay, great. That's, I think that sort of does our, yeah. <laughs> Okay, but if you have ideas, just just call me or text me or email me this week, and and we'll try and see if what we can put together. And of course, reindeer down the street, up and down the street. Of course, yes. <laughs> Sarah would love that a parade of reindeer. Just yeah, of one reindeer. Dear. <laughs> <laughs> okay, everyone. Thanks so much for your time tonight. I think we're coming to a close. Is there anything else anybody needs to discuss? It's 9.07. Our next <laughs> meeting is November the 9th, 7 p.m. Okay. So do I have somebody to make a motion to close adjourn the meeting tonight? I make a motion. We have a seconder. Jen, thank you. And all in favor of closing this wonderful meeting. Okay. Yeah. Oh, sure. Get your hand up. Yeah. <laughs> Scared. Thanks so much, everyone. I appreciate your time. I know it's long. We got lots going on. It's going to be